Dum dwee, dum dum dwee dow. Dwee dow, dum 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 dwee dow. I was trying to think of what I was going to, I had a, I thought I had an opening bit and I don't remember what it was now. I have to go find my show notes. It's good to know that you have show notes for this show because I've got show notes for the new show. Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. The guy that's buying a lottery ticket every week has a plan for the time. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And I'm the other. I don't want that win. I want the last 10 minutes back. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. I'm all about some fart filtering. Two guys, one podcast. She's wrong, but let's let's hear what she has to say. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. I'm sorry, what did you think it was? It's what I know it is. Okay. Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this is the podcast. Episode 93, as we hurdle along, my friends, uh, into the future and into uh, episode 100, don't forget that we want you to call us up. Uh, we want you to leave us a voicemail wishing us a happy anniversary and also uh, a fuck you if you want to. That number is 504-613-5635. 504 613 5635. If you're a new listener, you're like, why the fuck am I going to call you? Who are you? I don't even know what this is. No. <laughs> well, I didn't think you were about to throw something to me because I was going to say I've got I've got the title of our 100th episode. Oh, okay. That's all right. You do? Yeah. Well, there you go. Okay. So for the people who don't know what they are, at least they know what they're looking forward to. What what do you, what's the title? It's all about the Benjamins. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I thought something about a century is what I was, I've been we could talk I've been about trying to think famous about hundreds. That's a good idea, actually. Anyway, you can call us. Uh, we want you to call us. Please do call us. Uh, and that number one more time, 504-613-5635. Welcome to our comedy podcast. Uh, we are two guys with a slightly skew of view of the universe. And, uh, we try, uh, to meet here in the middle, uh, once every week in the studio and, uh, discuss the happenings of the world. Uh, we have some regular segments. You can catch up on all of that. Get a, uh, a glimpse inside uh, the two of us at twoguysonepod.com. You can also catch up on archives of the show. Uh, find our links to YouTube, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. We're all over the internet. Just search Two Guys One Pod or Two Guys One Podcast. Time to go to the rundown? Sounds good to me. All right. We've got a Southern Comfort this week. Mm, nice. Yeah, we got an old news. First time in a while. I love, oh, I I did come across an old news article that I was going to send you this week and didn't. I'm hoping it's the same one. We'll see. Well, you did send me a, an old news article this week. That's the, the You sent me one, and that's the one that I'm using. Oh, right on. It may be the same one. Maybe it's not. <laughs> if it's not, hopefully you can find the other one. That would be amazing. Then we'll have two in a row. Uh, we've got some listener mail. Uh, and we've also got a Who Are These Guys. That's all coming up on today's episode of Two Guys, One Podcast. Uh, let's go straight to it with a little Southern comfort. People are fascinated with the South right now. Well, and rightfully so. It is. Uh, this, the South is turning into the United States capital for reality TV. Uh. Well, first of all, we'll work at lower than scale. That's one of the things we got going for us. Uh, second of all, it's just, um, it's a fascinating, like the accent is so different than the rest of the country. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Exactly, exactly. Uh, all right. So the way that we do Southern Comfort is I'm going to give you, uh, I tr- give you the headline when possible, but if I have to cut out the headline, I will. We talk about a news story, and at the end of the thing, you try to tell me what state it's from. Yeah. And when we generally, you say that we should only limit it to the Old South. I include the entire, all of right. the seceded states. Yes. Yeah. But um, I haven't gotten it right yet. <laughs> really? really? Are you I over? I haven't gotten one of these motherfuckers right. That's amazing. I'm due one. 
Uh, students who were scammed out of more than $30,000 at the McDonald's in the student union at college deleted uh, for uh, obvious reasons. That sounds like grambling. Will be reimbursed. According that to a don't statement, sound like grambling. According to a statement from their dining uh, office. The police department, the college police department investigation, which began in October of 2013, found that at least seven McDonald's employees overcharged students on their university cards Cards, uh, through the point system and pocketed the difference. Employees of the McDonald's franchise entered alleged improper transactions, resulting in alleged unauthorized deductions from patrons who used the system at McDonald's in the student union. A statement from the university explained what happened. So far, five people have been arrested and charged with felony theft. Cassandra Nicole Bell, 31 years old, she was arrested on Thursday, booked into the uh, uh, prison. Uh, that's the seventh person accused of being involved in the scheme so far. The first floor, four, the first full. The first four. The first four employees. No one was on the floor when they got arrested. They might have been on the floor afterward. Oh, Lord, we got arrested. The first floor employee. I still can't say it. (laughs) The first four employees arrested Wednesday included Bertrand Lawrence Brown, Constance LaCole Brown, Danielle Marie Casey, and Janine A. Rooks. All four have been fired. Two other employees were issued summons on misdemeanor thefts early on in the investigation. Students who may have been scammed, and they've got a, a website there that uh, those students can go to uh, to, to try to uh, account for the uh, possibly extraneous spending. First of all, have you heard of something like this? I mean, you work in food service. Is this there, a problem that a lot of restaurants have? There's always a scheme brewing. <laughs> you saying all somebody's always worried about that money in that cash register? You, huh? you, you, it's uh, a lot the, of cash flowing. The the ingenuity that a thief uses is f- some fucking brilliant and amazing. At sometimes uh, this isn't going to be a who are these guys because I'm not going to make it a whole long story. But it could be. I could I could develop a whole thing. I worked at a McDonald's when I was in high school. Uh, for a couple of years, and uh, there was one of the managers was stealing through the Ronald McDonald box. Now, it's our belief that she wasn't actually taking any money from the Ronald McDonald organization, but she was using the donation box to funnel cash out of the register and into her own oh, pockets. Yeah. I can't remember the specifics of the thing, but like I do remember that like she was using that to cash out on occasion and make it not look obvious. That's simple money laundering right there. I know, right? It's genius. I mean, and the fact that she's doing it maybe all within a thirty foot space for a hundred dollars a day yeah. or something, you know, like that's or maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was twenty bucks a day. She's stealing, you know, a couple of meals a day, but over time. Yeah. It amounted to something serious. I, anyway. I know a guy who paid for uh, for putting on an, a deck onto his house uh, by scheming money, man. Really? Yeah. I I, th- I think the mayor of uh, Monroe <laughs> did something similar a few years back, maybe. Yeah. Um, let me tell you this, though. Here's the thing. So, it's a university. Yeah, and they've got to hate this because, like, the whole uh, every university I know is pushing one of these cards. Like, every we, everybody wants to be, you know, it's it's the blue card, it's the it's the G card, it's the Tiger card, it's the whatever, you know, like that's it's the Aggie ones. Aggie bucks. That, yeah, it's Aggie bucks or whatever. Everybody wants this this layer of currency because it's an it's an easy way to skim profit. Like, it's so ridiculous, money changing, and. We here locally, it's a bit of a scam. Like they hit merchants hard at times on like the fees and transactions and stuff. So, but you know, the university doesn't want the the idea out there that this is easy to do or is going to be something that can commonly be done uh, yeah. and and people can get away with because students will stop using them. Okay, I'm going to say it's not a Florida school. Okay, what leads you to that? There's no way you're going back to that well again. <laughs> but hey, listen, there's no way that I could pump Florida dry. I can frack the shit out of it uh, for 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 joke oil. I, there's it's it's a well that is never ending. It's a bottomless pit of jokes. 
Yeah, they're full of some giggling crude. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it tickled me. I'm going to say... I like how you just tried to start like three different states yeah, to yeah. see if I would react to any of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your name is Run Rise Sam Swan. I'm going to say Mar- Arkansas. <laughs> You're close, but no cigar. Louisiana, my Oh, friend. shit. The fine universe, the uh, Louis- Louisiana State I- University. No, shit. That's right. LSU, the student union. First of all, you, said, you mentioned Grambling earlier. Grambling doesn't have a fucking McDonald's in the student union. Louisiana not, Tech doesn't have any. The Louisiana Tech doesn't even have any name. The brand. administration at that school is fucked. <laughs> yeah, the administration would be stealing the money. Maybe not the, not the cashiers at McDonald's. I mean, that's what this. This sounds like maybe an assistant manager and a couple of cashiers. Maybe even uh, some family members. It sounded like two or three of them had the same last name. Sounds like a homegrown yeah, scheme. I should, is what I I'm saying. I should guess it would have been a larger school. Here's. Can I just make a suggestion to the to the potential crook cashiers of the world don't bring other people in on your scheme it's like one person stealing a bit out of the till once in a while is is easy enough to probably hide in the flow of a high traffic uh gordon gecko would say greed is good man. <laughs> yeah yeah greed is good greed but it's not greed when you spread it around to everybody in the fucking organization that that turns into communist russia and it falls unless you're the one controlling all the money from each shift well like, i mean man but but even then, you're talking about, okay, well, now, so you're saying it's, the mastermind was wetting their beak on everybody's take? Fuck yeah. All right, but my point is, you're still, you're increasing your own risk at an ever-reduced I didn't say return. the beak wetter was smart. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the whole point of being the godfather is that you get more than one criminal organization going. Apparently, one of these dudes <laughs> was working with family. <laughs> yeah, I think I, that's the problem right there. Don't ever steal with your family. Steal from your family. Maybe <laughs> not with your family. <laughs> it's not even deserving of that. Uh, let's go, let's go to a little listener mail. Jamail! Jamail is here! Ooh! <laughs> uh, this came officially from everyone I know and some people that I don't. <clears throat> The phrase you were looking for is oceanfront property in Arizona. That doesn't make any sense. (laughs) In the last episode, I got off on a tangent and I really got sidetracked. I don't know why I couldn't put it together in my head. I said, you know, the the old cliche about, you know, when, when something is nonsense, you say, oh, well, if you buy that, then I've got, you know, yeah, I I was here with you. Uh, yeah, and you didn't know what I was talking about. You still, now that you've heard the, I mean, now that somebody told me the phrase, and many, many, many people told me the phrase, but as soon as one person told me the phrase, I was immediately like, oh, I feel so foolish. That's so 1950s. Well, I didn't know. It's like 19, I mean, George Strait's song was from the 80s. Day? You know what? We don't, or we didn't. We, we're fucker. past it now. That's all right. We're 15 minutes in. We do, Hey, we, we Relax it. Like every now and again, we rotate in and out. We'll go back. We'll have a word of the day next time. We will have a word from Bob Ross. I didn't mention that in the rundown, but we will have a word from Bob Ross. Can't go without Bob. I don't know about you. I couldn't get a week without. I couldn't go through a week without Bob. I've gone many years bobless. <laughs> uh, so, we, but what were, we were talking about? We were talking about ocean. Fr- so the you still don't know. You don't know the song. You don't know the George Strait song. Ocean front property in Arizona. No. I've got some oceanfront property in Arizona. From my front porch, you can see the sea. No? That's stupid. The funny part is that Arizona is a landlocked state, for those of you that don't have it taken a geography class yet. Or maybe people who are international. Do you ever think about that, you cocky fuck? Ah, uh, good point. Good How point. American, you the, asshole. The listeners. Well, I, it's not like we have. Well, I mean, we have many more American listeners than international. But you're right. We do have international listeners. The, like you the literally, Canadians literally probably three know what episodes, three or four episodes. We were talking about how international the we were, international yes. listeners, and now you're fucking them. What? Well, well, I'm not fucking them. I'm just, you know, I was just saying. Uh so, but but uh, Arizona is a landlocked state. That that is some information, I guess, that would be helpful in the. What's a state? 
that's the the political subdivision that we have in our country. What's a county? I, who said anything about a county? Nobody said anything about. I don't a know. County. Oh, You're the one that brought that up. Parishes. Yeah, what's a parish exactly? A county is a parish, except it's in another state than Louisiana. And Louisiana would call our smaller divisions within our states parishes because of the dominance of the Catholic religion early in the state's development in history. <laughs> My stomach just growled so loud that I really wanted to like take a moment and make sure there wasn't something wrong with me for just a second. We also have uh, some other weird shit going on. What do you mean? Like Napoleonic Code versus civil law. Oh, you mean in the state of Louisiana? Yeah. Oh, we got a lot of weird shit going on. But I don't think, I mean... We don't have medians. We have neutral ground. Well... We don't buy groceries. We make groceries. We make groceries. But that's, I don't think everybody says that. There are a lot of people, there are a lot of people in the northern part of the state that if you said make groceries, Yankees. they would look at you funny. <laughs> yeah, if you're, from a, if, you're from, if you're from above Lafayette, you're a Yankee. <laughs> Let's do old news. Well, the show is speeding along very quickly this evening. Oh, yes. Someone must have told him it's harder to hit a moving target. <laughs> Headline. 86-year-old man found dead after allegedly killing his grandson's girlfriend. Yeah, I did send this to you. Yeah, you did. I appreciate it. I've been looking. I've been on the lookout. If you have, if you ever have old news, by the way, email it to us, two guys, one pod at me.com. Uh, police reported a family murder suicide in New York City on Friday. Here's, here's the thing is that headline is crazy. A lot of this article is ridiculous. There's one point that I don't understand at all. I don't. Just read the article and we'll talk about it. Okay. Uh, this comes, from, by the way, from the celebritycafe.com. Uh, 86-year-old man found dead after allegedly killing his grandson's girlfriend. Police reported a family murder-suicide in New York City on Friday that has left many confused. According to the Associated Press, 86-year-old Heriberto Pagan shot his 47-year-old grandson in the head outside of a Staten Island house. I opened the door, and that was it. Michael Feliciano, the grandson, told New York Daily News. Now, wait a minute. Right there, there's the first shocker. You tell me somebody got shot in the head, I'm going to assume they're not going to be interviewed in the, in the article. Yes. Yeah. Shot in the head. And, and what day was this on? Uh, Friday. Uh, well, let's see. Okay, so this this article came out on the thirtieth of March, which was oh, fuck. I'm bad with days. It was like Saturday, so it's really like a couple of days of him getting shot in the head. Yeah, I mean, at most the thirtieth was Sunday, I think. Yeah, because the the first was Tuesday. So yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So he gets shot in the head on Friday. This article goes out Sunday, which means they must have interviewed him sometime. At the latest, I would say Saturday evening. Sometime. Can you imagine the board? Can we get a Can we get a statement? Uh, hit me up on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just got I'm shot a, in the I'm head. I'm taking the weekend off. I just got shot in the head. Give me a while to collect my brains, <laughs> and I'll get back to you. Let me collect my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, literally. Let Ooh, me put my thoughts one. in a jaw, <laughs> in a jaw, in a jaw, in a jaw, in a jar. Oh God, the grandfather. Okay. The grandfather then shot Feliciano's girlfriend, 28-year-old Claritol, Claritol? These names, these are the weirdest fucking names ever. Claritol Christina Hierta in the head, in uh, in the head inside the building, killing her. He's been watching too much goddamn Walking Dead. Both headshots. Yeah, Feliciano is being held at Staten Island University Hospital and is reported to be in stable condition. Um. Uh, so the okay. So the grandson got shot in the head, but he's okay. The grandson's girlfriend got shot in the head and died. And what were their ages again? Uh, the girlfriend was twenty eight. The grandson was forty seven. Granddad's what granddad's the fuck. That's nineteen years. Yeah, that's a long age difference. That's a daughter. Well, let's talk about the gr- dad was thirty nine when he had the the son. Dad's eighty six, and the son's forty seven. Grandson. Oh yeah, good point. Good point. Oh shit! There's then that means that means dad and dad and granddad both got busy pretty early. Then this is a family that starts young and apparently is virile late in life. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. Pagan reportedly left the scene in his car and shot himself a few blocks away. 
Police found him dead in his vehicle. I'm sorry to laugh, by the way. Two people are dead out of this. Pagan was allegedly trying to evict Feliciano and Hierta out of his home and was angry about how long the proceedings were taking. The couple has a four-month-old son who was found inside the house as well. He was unharmed and is currently in the custody of the Administration for Children's Services. Let me just say this. I'm blaming Viagra. Landlords? You're blaming Viagra? Fuck yeah. This is clearly a Viagra-induced incident. I'm sorry. I didn't see those breadcrumbs. Blue, lay it out for me. He's 86 years old. Okay. He's got to get these motherfuckers out of his house so his lady friend can come over. (laughs) Unfortunately, he took a blue pill when he's trying to take, oh, I don't know, uh, some fish liver oil pills. Is 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 a This dude's heart got a raging boner and he knows he's only got however many hours this shit lasts. Three hours, four hours to get these fucks out of his house so he can get his freak on. I don't know. I think I mean the commercial specifically. And when you're eighty six, booty is worth killing for. When you're eighty six, booty is worth killing for. I'll I'll agree with that. I let me tell let me tell you this. As the father of four young children with a full-time job and a wife that has newly returned to the workforce herself. Booty is hard enough to come by in my schedule right now that I might kill somebody for it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, hey, you want me to make this real creepy? Sure. Think about you dating someone 19 younger than you. Uh, They would be 11? (laughs) No, uh, 12, 13. 13. I'm 32. They'd be 13 this year. They'd be 13 this year. Wow. How fucking disgusting is that? Pretty disgusting. Particularly when you think about the fact that since I could have easily been making babies when I was 19, I could be the father of a 13-year-old. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Now, having said that, my mother and father are 10 years apart. Mine are too. My grandmother and grandfather but ten were is ten years ten, apart. Ten, Ten's different than nineteen. Yeah, You're like right. almost half. But, it's twice as bad. Now let's say this though: the woman was twenty-seven, twenty-seven and forty, whatever it is, forty-six. Twenty-seven and forty-six Here's is what's better. Even worse. Here's what's even worse: this motherfucker ain't even old enough for her to be a gold digger. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless, holy shit, she was a gold digger. But she and the old man were in on it to kill the boyfriend for his life insurance money. Well, then why did the old man shoot her in the face? He's old. He's missed. He's got glaucoma. <laughs> saying he's, he shot and his after son. after seeing, like, if he would have shot his son, if he would have killed his son, would not have killed himself. But he literally killed his love. And his so little he was 27-year-old out. strumpet. Well, let me tell you something. He couldn't that go was, on, man. He, you're he you're saying it. he's... Um, He's Anthony Quinn. Uh, he's, he's, uh, didn't Anthony Quinn have have kids at like 72 or some shit like that? I don't like know that? who the fuck Anthony Quinn is. Zorba the Greek. Who you the know, fuck is Zorba the Greek? The fucking... The, 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 uh, he's, he was also... Um, he was Barabbas, too. In, you know, like the biblical epic. No? Anthony Quinn? You don't know Anthony Quinn? He's a well-known actor. An older actor. Yeah, from like the goddamn 40s. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, all, all the old ones. Don't were from don't then. reference something f- from mid last century and, and then get butt hurt when people don't know who it is. All right, all right, all right. I well, I, you're so current. You know what with the being on Twitter and Facebook all the time. Pretentious cocksucking prick, you. <laughs> I'm not a pretentious cocksucking prick. I'm. <laughs> I, 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 I wish you would have said I'm not a pretentious cocksucker. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a pretentious cocksucker. <laughs> But I am a prick. I am a prick sometimes. I was told this week I talked down to people. <laughs> and I heard. It through the grapevine. The last time somebody told me I talked down to them, I suggested she that they- She was picking sh- herself up <laughs> off the floor. <laughs> Who the fuck does she think she is walking in this goddamn house with a fucking opinion? No, no. That's- No. no. When I want your opinion, bitch, I'll fucking give it to you. Now suck my dick. No, what? Are, who is this character? Make that person go away. I don't know, it was the guy in the article. That's how I sound when I'm 49 and from Rodot, New York. <laughs> gotcha. <It's> Long Island. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> What's the trouble over here? <laughs> um, this dick ain't gonna suck itself. <laughs> no. 
What I was going to say Actually, was... Actually, that was my impression of the 86-year-old guy <laughs> from Long Island. <laughs> what I was going to say was the last time that someone told me that I, they feel like I talked down to them, I said, well, then you should try to talk higher. This... <laughs> it's a little pompous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's me. So I bumped them full of THC. <laughs> no, that's... No, especially not oh, after the article. Fuck. Did you, you read Sydney? the article I yeah, gave you? N- I did. Well, I didn't read it, but I read the Is headline. Is that going to be the breaking news? It w- it wasn't, but it oh. can be. Here, let's go to a little breaking news. Let's do it. Did we already do a breaking news? No. All right. We'll do it right now. Hang on. We're doing it. Here we go. This is international breaking news, in fact. Technically. Uh, all right, here's the... I mean, this, an, an international is breaking. This comes from Reuters.com. Is it Reuters or Reuters? It's Reuters, right? Tomato, Re- tomato. Re- Reuters? Reuters? Re- 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 uh, son number one is learning to read right now, okay? He's doing an excellent job. He's with, like, whole books uh, at home at night now. Like, it's really, it's taking a load off of me. I'm like, all right, let's read a book at bedtime, and I don't have to read it anymore. We just pick a simpler book, and he reads it by himself. That doesn't sound like he's learning. That sounds like he's doing. Well, I mean, well, yeah, he's reading simply. He's learning as he goes, you know, vocabulary increasing, et cetera. But when you come across a word that you don't know, what the first thing you do is you sound it out. You see if you... If that word sounds familiar, and then you'll know the word. If you don't know that, maybe you can do it with context clues as you sound I it out. I type it into Google and then just hit <laughs> yeah. pronounce So number one, don't know about Google. Pronunciate, you just well, hit Well, then it sounds like you teaching him the wrong goddamn <laughs> thing. It's called phonics, motherfucker. <laughs> what happened to phonics? They're, they're doing it. This is what I'm trying to fucking tell you is we're we're doing phonics at home. Right, but you remember the commercials back in the day? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hooked on phonics worked for me. Hooked on phonics worked for me, exactly, yeah. This, they don't teach phonics in school exactly, but they teach something kind of like a modern version of phonics. I'm using phonics so at home a little bit. Hey, sound it out. Let's work through it, you know, phonetically. So where was I going with that? Oh, Reuters. <laughs> Reuters. I'm, I, now I, every time I read a word... In my head, I hear son number one, like Roy, reading it. Roy, Roy, well, no, Roy. you say the like the letter sounds individually, so it's R E U T E R S. That gets real difficult. Is R E U T H R U R E T U R R E T U R. Okay, kudos on him. Kudos on him for reading a book. Kudos on you for listening to it. But holy fuck, how long does it take him to read a goddamn book? Well, you don't do that on every word. Most words, most words, he knows by sight now. When he, I'm saying, like when then you he come ain't across, reading, he's memorizing. No, I, that's how you read too, motherfucker. You don't read the word one letter at a time and then translate it to yourself. Hey, man, do you think blind blind people can't do that? <laughs> oh God damn! What are you talking like, those about? Those motherfuckers are really reading. <laughs> As opposed to the rest of us, right? We're just sighting. No, we're not. What? There's no. You know the words on sight. That's not reading. That's sighting. There's no. So he's just yeah, got to feel what? and then translate. There's reading. no difference. Okay, so if sighting, what you're describing would be if I was literally just identifying the words. I'm talking about seeing the words and putting them together in a sentence to form a coherent thought, and then understanding the point of the sentence. But that's, that's not what he's doing. That is what he's doing. He just said he was sighting. No, I'm saying he said he knows it by sight. He under he sees the word. He recognizes. I, as opposed to sounding the words out. Why did you turn me around on myself? Oh, let's go back to the Reuters article before I explode on you. Before that conversation happened, Honey Bun would have got a wink. <laughs> I need to be talking higher now. <laughs> All right. Exchange. Here the, here is the, here's the headline. Exchange student falls to death in Denver after eating marijuana cookie. <laughs> now let's talk higher. Sounds like... Uh... Sounds like his country got the short end of the stick. <laughs> well, you don't even know what he's... What? And that's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> that was better. And that's I, the way the cookie crumbles. There was something in there. I just had to find it. Uh, an African exchange student plummeted to his death from a hotel balcony after eating a marijuana-infused cookie in the first, related, in the first reported pot-related death in the city since Colorado legalized recreational marijuana in 2012. Okay, so at this part in the article, I'm kind of I'm on board with it. Okay. Right? I'm like, okay, that make I can see I can see how that would happen. That makes sense to me. Sure. Okay, let's keep going. 
the Denver the Denver uh, coroner's office uh, reported this on Wednesday. Levi Thambapongi, 19, died on March 11th from injuries related to the fall and marijuana intoxication is listed as a significant condition that contributed to the accident, said Michelle Weiss Samaras, spokesman okay, I get this too. for that the makes, that Denver just, Medical Office. That just affirms me being on board with this article. Right. Okay, so I'm, I'm with it so far. Possession of and use by adults of small amounts of recreational marijuana is legal in Colorado. The state's first retail pot shops opened in January. Pongi from the Republic of Congo attended Northwest College in Powell, Wyoming. He went on a spring break in Denver with three other exchange students from the school to try marijuana, Weiss Samaras said. you you got to assume there's a booming like pot vacation and, and that market sounds exact, right now. That sounds exactly like what some college kids would do. Yeah. Hey, let's, let's just go to Colorado and get baked and we can ski maybe or something. We used to something. road trip for titty and beer. Yeah. These guys are completely, okay, they're going to road trip for some weed cookies. All four of them tried cookies containing marijuana, she said. One girl in the group became ill after just one bite, but when Pongi ate... Okay, ate, so I'm with it. Up to that point, I'm with this article. I can totally see somebody eating a pot cookie and getting sick. Maybe it's the cookie, maybe it's whatever, but I can see some. I can see that being an effect. Especially if it's not a very well done one. I'm imagining most of the shops in Colorado that are selling pot cookies are pretty good at doing it, but I mean... Well, I don't mind. I'll, I'll, I have had a pot cookie from someone who didn't know what they were doing in baking one, and it tasted a whole lot like there was some pot baked in the middle of a cookie. And that's that's not an uh, it's not an enticing experience, whether you're 19 or 90. Yes. Here's where it loses me. Okay. One girl in the group became ill after one bite. When Pongi ate one of the cookies, he, quote, went off the wall and started running around the hotel room, Why Samara said. Bullshit. Yeah, I agree with you. First of all, anybody who, and well, you don't have to have tried this to know it, but if you if you research anything about edibles, the process of ingesting marijuana that way, it takes you. It doesn't. It's not an immediate reaction. I've never seen. I've never seen anyone high run. <laughs> I mean, maybe from something. No. <laughs> like, oh shit, y'all! We stoned, and there's a monster. They may have. They may have thought they were running, but they were they were loping. They weren't even loping. They may have been a brisk walk, maybe. Uh, his friends were terrified, and they did try to calm him down, she said, but he leapt from the balcony. The autopsy showed that Pongi had a 7.2 nanogram per milliliter level of THC, the psychoactive property in marijuana, and no other drugs or alcohol in his system, Weiss Samara said. Under Colorado law, a person is considered impaired at a 5 nanogram threshold of THC. Um, that still doesn't seem like tremendously high levels well, of... not to defend this article at all, not to defend uh, anybody wanting to do their, their vice of choice, okay? Sure. But it sounds like a lot of this in Pongi is completely psychosomatic. He'd never tried weed before. He had not said that he was going to get high... Right, and so he probably has an association with high as something different than what maybe, uh, you know, like a coke high. You see a lot of movies with coke heads. What are they doing? They're running around. Well, yeah, right. You see a movie with potheads. They're not even getting off the goddamn couch. They're ordering pizza. Right. So it sounds like this kid is just a fucking idiot, giggling incoherently. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe not an idiot, but I mean, I, I do. It does seem a little bit like. Well, you know, like the, I don't know, the girl at the party that's drinking, you know, well, non-alcoholic yes. beer and acting like she's drunk. Yes. Yeah. I. It, anyway, I feel bad for the kid and his family, obviously, and his friends. Uh, what? Why? Well, I mean, you know, because he's dead. That's, that's so. The fuck? What? People die all the time. It's, it, dude. That's well, a law of nature. Die, with, cancer's a stupid reason to die too, but I f- still feel bad for people when it happens. You know, like it, uh, just this because kid, you, cancer. You don't do cancer to yourself. No, I'm no, I'm aware of that. But what I'm saying is, just because it's a, just because it was his stupid choice, or he he acted in a hey, some got to get cold. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, this is uh, apparently, let's see, the, we just don't know how any one person will react when consuming intoxicants. Uh, that's from the uh, medical examiner. See, and here's the other thing. Here's, here's the other thing is, this is, a- again, in this article, that's them putting whatever it is they want, want to. They said intoxicants. 
intoxicated. They didn't say THC. You well, know how somebody reacts on THC. Well, I, I don't think, I mean, there, there's no other, there were no other drugs. There were no other traces of drugs got, or alcohol I in the system. I got you, but what I'm saying is that's a person taking that, uh, that examiner's uh, quote out of context and then putting it into this. Like, this is what they said. That examiner may not have even been talking about this case. That examiner may not have even been talking about pot cookies. Yeah, it makes yeah no. You, I see what you're saying there. Yeah, it's possible because if it was, why wouldn't they put that in there? Like, hey, no one knows. I mean, you, you, you're doing the doobies. You, who knows? Yeah, no, that's a good point. Well, and not only that, but I just realized in the article when consuming intoxicants is actually outside of the quotes. Like the it, you're assuming she said while they're high or something like that. But whatever it was that she said was clipped and paraphrased by the the interviewer. That's interesting, huh? Uh, Pongi, an engineering student, enrolled at a two-year community college 400 miles north of Denver in January, said Emily Volden, the school's intercultural program manager. We have 80 international students, and it's a very close-knit community. It's been a very traumatic thing for them as well to our entire student body. Here's the deal. I wouldn't travel 400 miles. To get stoned? For just about anything. Would you travel 400 miles for pussy? No. To be blunt and a little crude. I hadn't been nasty enough in this show yet. No, I wouldn't. And I love pussy. I'm trying to think if I ever have traveled 400 miles for pussy. I've traveled a long way for pussy before. I don't know that I've traveled 400 miles away. I've never traveled 30 minutes. (laughs) Are you in a town? Yes. Are there girls? Yes. Pussy's right there. (laughs) There's pussy right here. (laughs) But, But what about particular pussy? It's all particular. <laughs> They're all beautiful snowflakes. Yeah. Speaking of, you, of beautiful snowflakes, let's, let, why don't we delve into the beautiful snowflake that is me and do a little Who Are These Guys? So you and I got to talking about something the other night at the house. You and uh, Mrs. Other Guy came over, visited, played with the kids, and we I got like halfway into this story, and it occurred to me, or you you pointed out, you were like, I, why haven't we talked about this before? Have we ever talked about this on the podcast? I didn't know this. I, I thought for sure this is something that you and I had already long no, since and talked about. What, what, what? struck me was how nonchalantly you just threw it out I there. just throw it out there well it's a story that I tell often it's kind of it's like one of those things that at, at some point or another someone will ask about grandparents and and this is the thing that comes out so I I have one living grandfather and one living grandmother uh my father's mother and father have both passed away as I said earlier in the show my my father's 10 years older than my mother he got that uh, from his parents, his his father and mother were ten or maybe even fifteen years apart. Of course, I mean they got married in the I don't know the fucking twenties. I guess it was a long, a long, long time ago. The world was very different then. People didn't expect to live in as long United as United States, now. far, far away. <laughs> yes, exactly. A long, long time ago in the United States, far, far away. Well, in a state far, far away, Alabama is where they they got married. In fact, they got they grew up. They were born in Alabama. They were born on Chandler Mountain in North Alabama. Uh, my grandfather was a carpenter by trade, uh, and uh, he did a bunch of stuff when he was a young guy. But uh, the the story that I'm going to tell today is uh, is of his death. It's a pretty interesting story. It's hard to even be sad. <laughs> well, it is a little bit. It happened a long time ago, too. I was one year old. I was not quite one year old, actually, when he passed away. My grandfather was in his early 80s at the, the time. The the amazingness of the story, though, like, like even think about it now, I know someone died in it. Yeah, and you still can't. It's not like it's not it's not like that story earlier where the where the guy opened the door and shot his yeah grandson's girlfriend or whatever. No, no, no. It's not tragic in that way. First of all, the only person that died in this story was a very old man, so it's, it's slightly less tragic by nature. Um. My, he was in his early 80s. 
uh, and he uh, had retired back to the mountain on which he and my grandmother were both born. He built a house there, and that's where they had lived for several years at this point, up on Chandler Mountain. They were enjoying a nice, quiet retirement, uh, waiting on the grandbabies to come visit them, you know, as often as possible. Good guy, uh, just uh, biding his time. Hang gliders would use this mountain on a regular basis. They, Whenever the weather was appropriate, they'd, they'd come right off the cliffs, hang glide down into the small community below. Somebody would be waiting them to, on them down there with a car. You'd drive back up the mountain and go again. So Grandpa, Grandpa Sharpton loved – these fucking hang gliders. He thought it was the coolest thing ever, and he would Crazy watch them all the time. Hippies. I know, right? Well, I mean, and you get, you think about the time period. Like these are probably like young guys born in the late sixties. They're not hippies, but fucking they're like yuppies. hippies kids. They're yuppies, but they're yuppies before they started their careers. They're yuppies when they're young and idealistic still. So yeah, it was probably a lot of fun guys to be around, uh, or fun people to be around. I'm sure some of them were women too. But Grandpa would go out, not only would he watch the hang gliders, but he would even, he learned how to help them get some of their rigging set up, and he would be actively working with them, talking the whole time. He would have been doing it himself if he wasn't an old and frail right. man at 80, right. whatever, 83, 84 years old. So, because you've got to imagine, you got to imagine, like, growing up on the side of that mountain, he's probably looked over that valley, he's probably seen birds flying, and he's probably been like, oh, just to get off this mountain, just to get out of here, if I could just fucking fly away. Yeah, but a man and born and now there's fucking kids really doing it. I mean, you got to think about this. Like this man was born not like a couple of years before flight, but like a decade before he remembers or remembered a time before the invention of the airplane. That was the world in which this guy w- was born and raised and and lived and died. So I'm sure he was fascinated by the hang gliders. It yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So he would go out there. He would help him. He would work with him. Whatever. This one particular day, uh, it was it was very drafty, very windy. Uh, he's out there helping the rigging, and instead of backing away and getting good distance like normal, he just, for whatever reason, decided to, as he finished rigging up, he said, clear, we're ready to go, and he just bent down, just crouched down, kind of on all fours, pretty close to the ground, thought, hey, there's plenty, and, and I don't know how tall these units are, but you got to think, you know, the wing's probably five, six feet up. It's above the hang glider, and he's standing, you know, so it's not... You wouldn't think this would be a hard thing to get under and out of the way of. Just as the hang glider is going off the cliff, though, a little wind gust goes down. The wind dips. The wing dips. Excuse me. Grabs my grandfather's shirt and drags him off the mountain. Crazy. <laughs> that right there would be enough. You're like, oh, your grandfather died in a hang gliding accident. That's a little weird because you, your grandfather you shouldn't be hang gliding. Just pushed him off the mountain. Yeah, but a hang glider pushed him off the mountain. Okay, fine. No, grandpa had the presence of mind. And, and the, the physical wherewithal, he had balanced himself. He reached around, he saw what was happening or realized what was happening, reaches around and grabs the frame of the hang glider, and they begin to find a balance. He and the, and the hang glider himself, so he's pulling over to the side. They're trying to find how can we get this thing. It'll, it's wobbly, but maybe we can get it down to the ground without anybody getting too seriously injured. And everyone that was there at the incident said that he would have made it too. Except that about 50, 100 feet off the cliff, there's a big pine tree right there, and it was right in front of them. They, boom, broadside of the pine tree. Grandpa's knocked loose of the hang glider in midair. It's like a 100, 125-foot drop, whatever it is. Killed instantly. Uh, they found, as a matter of fact, an interesting side story. I didn't tell you this the other day. But they found um, uh, his glasses. Uh, my Still grandfather wore tree? glasses. Not in the tree. They found them on the ground, unbroken. Hmm. Uh, they had fallen off of him, and and they never cracked on the way down. Um, it was obviously it was sad to lose uh, our grandfather. I I wasn't around. I mean, I was around, but I didn't, I'm not cognizant at the time. But it's one of those stories that by the time I was old enough to know what it meant, it, it had been told so much. It was part of the family legend. I didn't think a whole lot about it, other than I knew every time I've told it, people that hear it for the first time react strongly to it. They're like, "Wow, that's weird, man." And that alone would be that, weird enough. Do you think the hang glider ever did it again? Do you think he ever strapped up in the old hang glider? I, you know, I don't know. That's flight? a good question. I mean, he was injured as well. He did hit the granny. I think he broke a leg and maybe an arm or something like that. But There's he, no he did survive. There's no way you do it again. I don't think so. Once you've been part of someone's death in a sport like that. Now, having said that, you'd imagine Grandma... Living up on the mountain, Grandpa Sharpton 
comes off the mountain and dies that way, you she'd leave probably the mountain. she'd probably move off the mountain, right? Right. No, sir. That was in eighty one. My grandmother lived on Chandler Mountain in that same house, right there on the fucking cliff. And when I say she's on the cliff, the literally the back, the back wall of their home, if you paced it out, was less than forty five paces to the edge of the cliff, and it's a, you know a two hundred foot drop straight from their home or whatever. Right. Uh, now that's not where they went off hang gliding. There was an area down further away from the home. But Grandma lived there for more than a decade after Grandpa died. It laid into the nineties. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think, well, I'll tell you when she moved. She only moved when she fell off the fucking mountain. God. And this was the part of the story that you were like, this is, you have to tell the story in the podcast. If we haven't, t- if we haven't done this already, you have to share this. Because, yes, you fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on fucking me, right? Like the family, that mountain's got it in for the sharp. Well, and aren't you guys planning a trip to Alabama? We are. We're going to go. To Chandler Mountain? We are. We're going to go. Well, not just to Chandler Mountain. The whole area, we've got family still in the area. It's and not we're a good go place for sharp summer. man. <laughs> Apparently not. Uh, but no, Grandma Grandma was, uh, this was like, I don't know, 12, 15 years after Grandpa Sharpton died. She's out in the back backyard. She's, she's like scraping out, uh, you know, the leftovers from breakfast or whatever for the birds and the animals just off the edge of the cliff. The animals can get it there in the crevasse or down in the below. And there's dogs running around her feet or something, trip her up. She goes off the edge of the cliff. Now, you got to think, we're talking at this point about a, like an 85-year-old woman stooped over. I mean, she looked like... She looks like a stale Getty and stop her. My mom will shoot. Okay, you you're falling off the cliff. That's that's the end of Grandma, right? Right. No, my friends, no. That tough old bird, halfway down. It's about sixty foot drop from where they where they found her. But about halfway down down the uh, cliff, there was a a barrel, like half of a barrel that had been thrown over and had wedged in between two uh, the rock wall or whatever. And it was sitting up almost like a saddle. She fucking landed and straddled it. And right there she sat for six and a half hours before someone found her. Her leg was bent up behind her. Her right leg was bent up back behind her, broken in several places. And the only reason anybody found her six or seven hours later is because there was an older couple that was supposed to come pick her up why Sunday nights for church. Why, why isn't she the spokesman for Life Alert? <laughs> Well, she's dead now. That was, that was why the, wasn't she the spokesman yeah. for Life Alert? That's a good damn question. That I mean, like, you would think that like, story like, like, like they would come and like, <laughs> like that little bitch down next to the toilet. Help! I've fallen and I can't get up. Really, Grandma? Fucking really? This chick, <laughs> this chick fell off a cliff, straddled a goddamn barrel, broke her leg in four places, and sat there for six hours. So this older couple comes to pick her up for church, right? And the uh, you know generally they Thank just God pull up. Church, I know they just pull up. They honk the horn. Thank God it wasn't a Monday night. If it was a Monday night, it might have been a week before anybody yeah. came to get her. So, <laughs> so, so the couple pulls up in the driveway. They honk the horn. She doesn't come out. Can you imagine if no one did showed up, and that was how she met her end? <coughs> and then how the, no one would know how it happened. All of a sudden, Grandma's just. 60 feet down this fucking cliff straddling a barrel. Oh, wow. That would, have been, that would have been fucked up. Did somebody throw her off? Some robber come by? You don't know? Yeah. Because you were, well, wow. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, it would have been a real, like, what? how the hell did she end up down there? Yeah. Wow. Okay. That that was that's a weird thought. That's not what happened, folks. She didn't she didn't die from the fall on the mountain. I should I should hedge my bets here and, and, and you, go ahead and, and you gotta, spoil the end. And you got to think. Six hours for an 80-year-old woman on the side of a cliff straddling a barrel. Oh, it's fucking got to be tough. Is a lot like, what was the Franco movie? 127, 127 hours. 127 hours? That's probably pretty comfortable. There's, yeah. If she could have pulled herself out of the crevasse, she might have like, chewed something off so that she could have done it too. I don't know. Yeah, but So the couple goes in, or the, the wife goes in because grandma doesn't come out. She goes in, checks the house. Hey, uh, she's not in there. Her clothes are laid on on the bed, but she, she's not <laughs> I don't know. expected to see a naked grandma running around the woods. Yes. <laughs> so she and the husband both get out and they start oh. walking around the house hollering, Bertha, Bertha, you know, hey, is there anybody, Bertha? Hey, can you, are you here? Can you hear? And soon enough, yeah, hey, I'm down here, you know. She's like, she's like, what? I've been screaming for six goddamn hours. Yeah. You can't hear me down here. What the fuck? No, let me tell you, this is, this is exactly what happened. So the paramedics get there. 
and they lower, you know, repel, somebody repels down into the, the fucking side of the cliff or whatever right. to get her. And they're strapping her in and whatever. And as they're getting to her, she tells the guy, she says, <coughs> I shit myself. No, she just said, they said, ma'am, are you okay? And she said, oh, I'm fine. Matter of fact, if you can straighten out my leg, I believe I could climb out. <laughs> oh, wow. They ask her later on, and we, I, when we finally got to see her, this was a couple weeks later when I, when we got to Alabama. But when I finally got to see her, um, I, I asked her the same thing. You know, well, were you scared? What happened? Why you? She said, No, it hurt a little bit at first, and then I wasn't. Then I didn't. She said she didn't feel it after a little while. I'm sure she, her body went into right. shock. And you're over it. But she said, I, I, she said I did get nervous for one, for just one little minute. But the birds came down and sang to me. She's fucking Snow White down in the middle of this fucking cliff whistling with the birds, man. It's unbelievable. See the power of whistling? I'm telling you. <laughs> she was a tough old bird. She's an amazing woman. There's more Grandma Sharpton stories. I got to tell you, I've thought several times there's a good podcast to be had just recording my dad telling stories about his mother and father and then editing them down because he would probably ramble a little bit. But like the crux of the stories told in his ridiculous voice would actually be um, pretty compelling audio, I think. When you got, when the when the time that the two of them fell off the mountain is it the best story in their life, you know that's a good damn yeah. person to tell a story about. That's that's crazy, man. Blew my mind. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's who are these guys? Uh, we've um, I, th- I thought I had one more something, but we did old news already, and then we sprung into who are these guys? Yeah, I think we're about ready. You ready to wrap it up? How are we on time? Oh, we're doing fine. Oh, we're good. All right. Hey, before I close out today, uh, go to twoguysonepod.com. That's where you can stop by for all your Two Guys One Pod needs. Check out the archives. Check out our new YouTube page, uh, youtube.com slash twoguysonepod. Um, and also, uh, you can... Uh, I like how I like how it's called YouTube, but every motherfucker on it is using it for MeTube. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were telling us, hey, this is for you. And, and you. And you. <laughs> and you, and you, and you. Uh, and now it's for you, youtube.com slash two guys, one pod. Um, I do also want to tell you that the outro music this week is from the lost ambitions. The name of the song is called and so, and it's off their latest album, upper lower class. I think you're going to like it. In fact, they lost so much goddamn ambition. They couldn't even finish the title. (laughs) It's a, it's a, uh, dangling participle joke. Uh, all right. <laughs> to wrap things up this week, here's your word from Bob Ross. You can get them all at bobrossquotes.com. Hey, I wonder if we could get we should get Trojan to sponsor the wrap up. <laughs> I'm time for the Trojan wrap up. Let's don't start plugging it until they start paying for it. All right. Uh, here's your word from Bob Ross. I just like to beat the brush. Me and him both, brother. <laughs> Too much of that, you'll go blind. <laughs> I don't know. I like a little brush. You like a little brush? Yeah, I don't like. I don't like. Oh, fucking... you. T- we were talking about different things. You know what? You're talking about boy brush. I was talking about girl brush. Yeah. Here, let me tell you this. I like the presence of brush, a bush. I don't like the. I think look I th- of bush. I wish. I wish that. I wish that. I wish that you could genetically engineer clear bush. I guess is what no. I want. <laughs> no, that's creepy. <laughs> then you'd be like, what the fuck is that? Here's what's convenient about Bush, if we really want to get into this right now. It provides, it's like a natural, it's not lubricant, but it, it, it provides a, it, like it's a, it's a, you know, it's like it's not a, it's not, it's a non-abrasive. It, it's, it, it uh, less I'm, friction. I'm not going down this rabbit hole with you at all. <laughs> really? You don't want to talk about this? Why are you for Bush then? I like it. I just... I like the way it looks. I like the way it smells. Yeah. I like the way it tickles my nose. <laughs> that, oh. I'm not going down that rabbit hole with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't ask and then get pissed off by the answer. It's f- fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, until next week, I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this has been the podcast.
Wide open minds, electric starts, a beating heart, a bloody knife, takes all our lives, keep your soul, we don't need help, we <laughs> Real big into here's a little sidetrack into uh, into another brief. Who are these guys? It's gonna be full of that this episode. Uh, sun number one They're is seeing brief glimpses of us. Yes, sun number one is uh, like fireflies in the summer night. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Sun number one is learning how to read. That's that's the that's the song about the brief glimpses oh, okay. into myself. Okay. It's titled Fireflies and Mud Pies. <laughs> I appreciate you giving me my outro bit right there.